All right, guys, welcome back to the uh, the Carf L39 build. Um, we've had some of the parts show up um, over this past week, I guess, and I'm still waiting for the owner of the plane to deliver some of the parts. Hopefully, I'll get those this week. Uh, we did just place the big order for all the, the little pieces uh, that will be going in the plane to uh, to complete the build. So what I'll do today is uh, for this portion of the build, I'll go through uh, with you guys some of the parts that we got and also uh, we'll see how it goes from there. But um, that's what I'm gonna show you next. All right guys, so we received the, uh, the JR order. Now uh, we will be um, using a JR28X to uh, pilot this plane. And uh, that's actually my radio, but the owner's got the same one. Uh, anyway, so this is the JR Pro um, 16 BPX hybrid controller. So what it is, is you've got 11 uh, PWM outputs, which are for regular servos. And you've also got uh, 16 X bus outputs. Um, and you can also make this uh, additional outputs by using the, um, the converters and using regular servos with it. So there's a lot of options with this setup. And then we also got our order for all the uh, JR servos. Now these are the brand new 8921s. Uh, really, really strong servos. I don't know the spec on them, but they are awesome servos. So we got, uh, I think, eight of those guys. Uh, what else did we get here? We got all of our servo arms. Uh, these were all ordered based on the recommendations in the uh, some of the other build threads and also the manual. So those are all of our servo horns and our servos and uh, our receiver setup. So that's kind of nice because it gets things uh, started for the build and um, that's step number one. So some of the other things that we've had show up this week that aren't here at my house yet are uh, the turbines here, um, the um, iGyro 3E that we're going to be putting in the plane along with the GPS unit is also here and um, what else the uh, the gear the landing gear um, and the struts and the uh, the scale cockpit uh, those have all been ordered and they should be showing up soon as well so the next big order that we get which will hopefully be here next week will uh, will help us really progress with the build um, I'm going to be able to do a couple little things here and there, but uh, for now, we're just waiting on the last parts to show up and then we'll be continuing with the build. All right, guys, so we're going to be building this as per the manual and the way the manual has it laid out. So basically, step number one is assembling the, uh, the elevator section. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, we need the uh, part bag number eight, which is the, uh, the stab bag. Pieces are in there. Uh, we need the uh, to open up the special parts bag and get the carbon, uh, um, the roving, which goes, you know, I'll show you in a second here where it goes. And then we also need our control rods, which are there. And that's basically the first setup for the elevator setup. So we've got our parts. Um, basically, everything's explained in the manual. It's pretty straightforward. This is our final goal. So essentially we put the carbon roving over top of the uh, the brass tubes and uh, that uh, basically completes the elevator install as far as the surfaces go. Now um, I've already taken a look at the actual elevator setup here. Uh, it's kind of nice they left the uh, the actual rod that goes through the, the, the surface itself. That's still loose so you can pull this out if you need to. And um, obviously once it's all done we can just uh, basically cut it off, put a little bit of uh, sealant on the end and that'll prevent it from coming out. But it's still removable if you need to take it out and do any maintenance. But essentially what we're doing here, just to show you on the actual elevator, is we're going to roughen up these surfaces uh, of the brass tube all the way around. Now these pieces spin, right? And uh, so we're going to roughen up those surfaces where they uh, intersect with the pieces of carbon. And uh, then we're going to put high sol in there, put the carbon roving over top of the uh, the brass tube and the piece of carbon and then it's going to come on the other side and solidify all this together and that allows the uh, the elevator to be nice and solid and move. So that's basically our first step here in the build and uh, once I get that done guys I will show you what it uh, looks like complete. 
All right, guys, so we ran into one little uh, hiccup here. Not really a hiccup, but I just want to show you guys um, just so you have an understanding of, of what I did here. So basically, um, on this side of the elevator, uh, when I moved it, it was making a rubbing sound. And one would think that maybe it was the brass tubing that was rubbing. But uh, upon further or closer inspection, it was actually that spot right there. So I'll try and show you here. So when the elevator moved a certain direction this way, um, the actual surface was rubbing against the of uh, that part right there. So a little bit of work with the file is all that it needed, and uh, totally got rid of all the any interference there. And uh, if you didn't take a close look at that, you might start grinding out or sanding out the uh, the brass tube, and that's not necessary because it was not this interfering. A little tip here for you guys. Uh, these pieces of carbon when you do the roving when you do cut them they tend to splinter uh, not not splinter but they don't stay together and uh, it's a little difficult to get them on there so what I was doing was take the piece like this the dry piece uh, take some high saw on my uh, on my fingers and just coat the coat the carbon like that I guess it's it's really what it's doing is it's impregnating the 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 piece and then what happens is it's a lot easier to get it uh, get it over top of the uh, the area where it needs to go and it sticks beautifully so basically what I'm doing I'm just getting it in place and I'll go back with uh, with my little screwdriver and just clean up all the uh, the high saw on it so little tip for you right, so this is what it looks like just after I got the carbon installed so it's still pretty messy so what I'm going to do is take my trusty uh, bent screwdriver this is the uh, most used tool in my toolbox and I'm just going to go through and clean this up a little bit, add some more high saw on the sides. I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's cleaned up. All right, folks, so cleaned up might be the wrong term, but what I did is I just went through and uh, touched up the areas with some more high saw, making sure that uh, all the areas are in contact. Um, I'll show you the other side here. There's the other side. So anyways, that is basically... Uh, Step number one in the manual. That's it. All right, guys, well, that is curing. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is mounting the elevator servos. And uh, it's outlined in the manual here. Now, one thing is when you're working on this, it's actually upside down, right? So what I did is I marked uh, right elevator, left elevator, but uh, you wanna make sure you put it on the plane like that and just figure out which one's which because uh, they do, they are, I guess, backwards when you're looking at it like this. Now, because we're using XBus servos, um, I've already programmed these. So this is programmed as the left elevator channel. Uh, if you're not familiar with XBus, basically uh, this servo is now um, dedicated to the left elevator servo. So it doesn't matter which XBus channel we plug it in, it is only going to work as a left elevator servo unless we reassign it. Um, so I have gone and marked that on the actual servo itself. And then uh, the right elevator is marked there. So basically it calls for um, with uh, 1.25 inch aluminum servo arms, which we have here from JR, um, D-Force Aviation. So we're going to mount those on the servo and uh, get them centered as well too and get them mounted in the rear tail section. Okay, a couple things I wanna to mention to you guys. Um, number one, when these servos go in, the, uh, the wire is gonna be feeding out through this direction. Um, so the one thing I wanna do is you wanna tape the, uh, the servo wires to the case. And the reason I suggest that is just longevity. So if you have the servo sitting in there, the wire is gonna be rubbing on the, the fiberglass, on the wood, and uh, if you can tape that up uh, to the actual servo case itself, 
then um, I'm going to put some, uh, sh some sheeting or some covering going to the front and uh, the front of the plane and that's going to ensure longevity of that servo wire so you never have to worry about it chafing and rubbing through. Uh, use Gorilla Tape for that, works awesome, never comes off. And uh, the other thing I want to mention too is Loctite. So make sure you're Loctiting the, uh, the actual servo arm screw that holds the horn on. And then also these aluminum or metal horns have um, the set screw there, which you got to make sure you Loctite those. Um, again, super important to make sure that that happens. All right, guys, so servos are installed for the elevators. Um, what I do when I put these in is I uh, put the servo in place and I put a little drop of, uh, of thin CA on the screw and then screw it in. So that helps harden the, uh, the plywood that it's screwing into and also prevents the screw from backing out. So just a little note there. Um, now one thing, and I, I hope I got this right, I think I did all the, the calculations and everything. Um, I just wanted to get the servo centered properly. So when you're pulling back or up elevator, you want this servo to be moving towards the tail. And that will give uh, up elevator. And um, the reason I wanted to get that set properly is with these X-Bus servos, um, <clears throat> if you're programming it by the receiver, you basically plug one servo in at a time to uh, reprogram everything. So it was easier for me to do that now, and now all the programming's done. So elevators are installed. Um, next thing, once the uh, tail section gets uh, cured, is I will attach the, uh, the control rods. All right, guys, so the uh, <clears throat> it's another day now, uh, I don't, so I don't know where I finished off, but anyways, the elevator servos are mounted, um, the arms are run down there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the elevator servos out, and uh, we need to uh, treat all the wood back here with uh, thin down finish finishing resin. And uh, reason for that, basically, if you've got a plane, uh, I mean, it's a good thing to do on any turbine, but if you've got a plane where you uh, are installing smoke, um, there's always some smoke that either spills, uh, smoke oil that's being sucked back in. So uh, if you don't treat your formers with um, something, they will soak up oil like a sponge or fuel like a sponge. So anyways, that's the next step in the tail section and um, that's what we're doing. All right guys, so all the, the uh, woodwork inside of the rear has been um, treated. Next step is to get the uh, elevator section installed on the rear section. Now there's these little tabs that you can see right there and they fit in this little slot. There's one on each side. Um, they come, at least in this kit, they come too big. So there's no way that that's even, even getting in the slot properly. There's a shot of the slot. So you have to do a little bit of sanding work to get them sized to fit. Obviously don't do too much. But uh, that is how you join the two uh, pieces together.